Now when you're working with thirds, you're going to find that you get many calculations where you have to do addition and subtraction. So suppose we had a sum something like this, 5 root 3 plus 2 root 3, say minus root 3. What would this come to? Well, all the terms are the same kind of terms, they're root 3 type terms, and so we've got 5 root 3 plus 2 root 3, that's going to be 7 root 3, and then we take away another 1 root 3, and that's going to mean that we get 6 root 3. Alright, let's try another one. Suppose we have 13 root 3, minus 2 root 5, minus 5 root 3, and in this example what I'm doing is having different types of roots here. You see that I've got two terms with root 3's in and two terms with root 5's in. And we can simplify this one. If we look at the root 3 terms, we've got 13 root 3, take away 5 root 3. There's no other root 3 terms here, so that's going to mean that I've got 8 root 3. And then when we look at the root 5 terms, these two here and here, we've got minus 2 root 5 minus another 1 root 5, so that's minus 3 root 5, so minus 3 root 5. Then you get harder ones, something like this, where a question may say simplify, say 2 root 8 for instance, 2 root 8 plus 3 root 32. And at first sight, unlike these ones up here, it looks like we haven't got the same kind of square roots, so we can't go any further. But there's a clue here. It says simplify, and if we're f and looking at this, we feel we can't. There must be something in these square roots that we can do. Well, by the multiplication rule, we can split the 8 into two factors, one of which is a square number. Four twos are 8. So we can say that 2 root 8 is going to be the same as 2 times the square root of 4 times 2, that being 8. And also, when I look at the square root of 32, there's a square number that's a factor of 32, 16, so I can think of this then as 3 times the square root of 16 twos. Now, this particular square root can be split up to be 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Plus, over here, 3 times, similarly, the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. Now we know the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 2's would then be 4, and so we're left with 4 root 2 for this first term. And over here in the second term, we have 3 times the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, 3 4's would then be 12, and we'd have 12 root 2. So you can now see that what we've got is two terms with the same square root in them root of 2. We've got 4 root 2 plus 12 root 2 and that's obviously going to give us 16 root 2. So if you get a question something like this, simplify an expression and you find that they've got different square roots, try and work them down to the same square root as I did, root 2 in this case, and then you'll be able to group them together. Okay, so that's addition and subtraction. What else have we got? Multiplication. So let's have a look at doing some multiplication now. So if we look at multiplication, what kind of problems could you get here? You might have, say, 5 root 3 having to be multiplied with, say, 3 root 2. Well, this is the same as 5 times root 3 times 3 times root 2. So you can do this in any order that you like. So suppose I now do 5 times the 3. Well, that's going to be 15. 
And then I've got root 3 times root 2. And remember, by the multiplication rule, we can put this under 1 square root of 3 times 2, which is 6. So what we've got is 15 root 6. What happens if we had, say, root 5 all squared? Well, root 5 all squared is exactly the same as the square root of 5 times the square root of another 5. And by the multiplication rule of thirds, this is exactly the same as doing the square root of 5 times 5. And 5 fives are 25. And the square root of 25, we know, is 5. So root 5 squared equals 5. That seems to suggest, doesn't it, that the number in here, all we do is just simply get rid of the square root sign. So, in other words, let's just check that out for another one. Let's suppose we had root 3 all squared. Root 3 squared is the same as root 3 times another root 3, which is going to be root of 9. And the root of 9 is 3. So indeed, it is true to obviously say that the square root of any number, let's call, say it's a, when it's squared, is going to result in a. And this is a result anyway that we should know just generally, regardless of using this particular method. However, I just felt that it was worth mentioning again via the multiplication rule for thirds. Here you are. Let's just try another one. Let's try something like this, though. Root 6 all cubed. Root 6 all cubed? What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be root 6 multiplied by another root 6 multiplied by another root 6. And root 6 times root 6, according to the above, is just going to be simply 6, because it's the square root of 36. So that's 6. So we've got 6 times another root 6 is just left at 6 root 6. Well, we've got multiplication here of just simple examples like this. You can also get multiplication when you are multiplying out brackets. So let's just have a look at that. Let's have a look at, say, multiplying root 3, OK, minus, say, 3 root 2 by itself, squaring it. Well, if we had that, OK, I would most probably write a couple of brackets like so and put root 3 in minus 3 root 2 and do the same again, root 3 minus 3 root 2. And in the usual way, when we multiply out brackets, we would do root 3 times root 3. Well, that's this idea up here, isn't it? Root 3 times root 3 is going to simply be 3. Then I would do root 3 times the next term in the bracket, root 3 times minus 3 root 2, two and what I get is minus 3 root 6, because root 3 times root 2 is going to be root 6. What have we got here? We've got next minus 3 root 2 being multiplied by this root 3. So we have minus 3 root 6, minus 3 root 6. And then the last two terms are multiplied together. Minus 3 root 2 times another minus 3 root 2 is going to be 3 times 3, which is a 9. It'll also be a plus value, 9. And then you have root 2 times root 2, which is going to be just simply 2. So 9 times 2, that's going to be 18. So I just rub that out and put an 18 there. And if I finally simplify this, I can add together the 3 with the 18. And that's going to give me 21. And then I've got minus 3 root 6 minus another 3 root 6. That's going to be minus 6 root 6. So expanding that bracket gives 21 minus 6 root 6.